So this is Math 142, and this is Section 6.2. And we're going to start to get to, into some trigonometry, and we'll talk about uh, trig in the context of right triangles. Uh, so right triangles, as you know, are angles that, uh, triangles that have a 90-degree angle in them, or a pi over 2. And um, we, we already know some stuff about right triangles. We know how to relate um, a side to a side. You know, um, Pythagorean theorem. So we know that if we know two of these sides, we can get the third side through this a squared plus b squared equals c squared relationship. And notice that's a relationship, um, like I said before, that relates the sides to each other. We also know um, angles uh, relationship. We know that the sum of the angles in any triangle has to be 180 degrees. Um, and notice that the capital A is the, is the angle measure, the lowercase is the side length. Um, and what's nice also is if C is 90 degrees, that means that A plus B uh, must, must equal to 90 degrees. And angles that sum to 90 degrees are, are called complementary angles. So we have this relationship angle to angle. We have this relationship side to side. So the question is, What's my relationship angle to side? In other words, if I know the measure of one of these angles, what can I say then about the side lengths? Now that's where trig comes in. That's what, that's what trigonometry does for us. So let's start with um, just the, the trig function sine. So sine is a function, we usually abbreviate it as a sine, S-I-N. And let me talk about sine of, for example, example angle B. So sine is a, is a function. It's kind of a black box to us. And what it does is it brings in an angle. So my input into sine would be some angle. And this sine machine then spits out something about two of the sides. And that side is a ratio. So sine, um, if I take in sine of an angle, and that angle's in a right triangle, one way to think about sine is what it spits out is the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. So if I, if I look on this, this triangle, the opposite side is B, and the hypotenuse is C. So... What this would do then, if I went sine of this angle B here, it would spit out the ratio of how long side B is divided by how long side C is. Notice it spits out a ratio. So let me take an actual right triangle. Let's say I have this 3, 4, 5, and I'll just call this, call this B and call this A. So notice if I went sine... Of angle A here. Now I don't know the actual measure of it, but if I did and I plugged it into the sine function, what it's going to spit out is the ratio opposite over hypotenuse. So what it would spit out is three fifths. And notice if I went um, sine of B, sine of B, this measure is relative to what angle I'm at. So I'm if I'm this angle. There's my opposite, and I still have the same hypotenuse, of course. So that would be, that would be four fifths. So um, sine again, what it does is it spits out spits out a ratio of sides. If you if you give me the angle, I can tell you the ratio of the side lengths in that triangle. So with that in mind, let's start to define uh, these these trig functions, and we know that sine of some of some angle i'm just going to say a for now in a right triangle is the opposite side divided by the the hypotenuse and i could get another one up here too the it's called it's called cosine and so cosine of an angle is the adjacent side divided by hypotenuse so let me uh let me think about this here. If I go back to this triangle, if I go cosine of, of angle A, the adjacent side is, is this side, the side that's adjacent to the angle, divided by the hypotenuse. 
So in this case, that would be four-fifths. Or if I go um, cosine of, of angle B, same idea. Cosine is this adjacent side, this side that's adjacent to the angle opposite the hypotenuse. So that's three-fifths. So this is kind of interesting. Notice in my triangle, if I go uh, sine of one of the angles, that's the same if I go cosine of the other angle. Notice they both are three-fifths. Or if I went sine of angle B, it gives me the same answer as the cosine of angle A. Now, there's something in this name of cosine that gives us a hint about that. A and B are complementary angles. Co angles, complementary. So the sine of A is, is the same as the cosine of B. Cosine is the complementary sine, or the sine of the complementary angle. So if the sine of the angle is three-fifths, the, its complement, the sign of its complement will be the same, is also three-fifths. Another way to think about this is um, if I just focus in on one of these. Sine of A, here's angle A, is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of B is adjacent. Notice B's adjacent is A's opposite. So, there's a nice relationship between, between sine and cosine. Again, one thing to, to keep in mind with these, with these trig functions is they, uh, they take in an angle and they spit, out, they spit out a ratio. 10 times as big. Let's say this side's 30, this side's 40, and this side's 50. And I have this angle here that I'm calling B. Um, if I go sine of B, sine I know is opposite over hypotenuse, so opposite over hypotenuse, forgot to label it, it's a 90 degree, that would be 40 over 50, which reduces to 4 fifths. Notice that this angle is the same, like if I blow this up, I just made this 10 times bigger in this direction, this angle measure hasn't changed. So when I go sine of an angle, it's giving me something about the ratios. It's not necessarily telling me the actual sizes. It's telling me the relationship between the opposite and the hypotenuse. It's not giving me, like I said, uh, the actual measures of the triangle. It could be any blown up or shrunk down version of it. So what I'd like to do is get a couple other uh, trig functions defined up here. Uh, sine cosine. We also have what's called a tangent, abbreviated tan, and tangent of some angle is the opposite um, over the adjacent. So, for example, in this in this example, if I want tangent of B, it's opposite over adjacent, four thirds. Notice that's like if I have my triangle lined up this way, that's like change in x and change in y, or, or rise over run. The tangent is also known as the slope function. It gives the slope. So there's uh, three other ones I want to define, and these are what are called the, uh, the reciprocals. And they are uh, basically these flipped over. I have what's called cosecant, and I have what's called secant, and cotangent, and these are all of some angle. And they're the reciprocals of these. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, or, or sine flipped over. Uh, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So there's some relationships. So I had like sine of 19 degrees, and I wanted to compare it to cosine of 19 degrees. And I'm just wondering which one's bigger, which, which one would be greater. So if I had 19 degrees, notice that's a very small angle. And it's probably even smaller than, than what I drew there. But if I think about this, sine is, is opposite over hypotenuse. So I can kind of think of sine as, as a, almost a measure of height. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I can almost think of that as a, as a thing of width. And notice they're both going to be over the hypotenuse. So if I have 19 degrees and I have to have a right angle, this width, this adjacent, is going to be much longer than that height. So I would argue that sine of 19 degrees must be less than cosine of, of 19 degrees. 
I can make a similar example about 90 degrees. How would sine of 90 degrees compare to cosine of 90 degrees? So if I do that, 90 degrees, uh, let's not do 90 degrees. I meant to do 80 degrees. Sorry about that. So 80 degrees is super steep. And if I think about sine as opposite, kind of height, and cosine as width, they would both be over hypotenuse. So notice this is going to be bigger than that. So that must be larger than that. So there's got to be some point where there would be where they would be the same, where they should be equal to each other. And that would be when this width is the same as this height. And so basically I would have an isosceles triangle. And that happens when these two angles are the same. So that would happen at 45 degrees. So that makes me think that sine of 45 degrees must be equal to cosine of 45 degrees. So that's kind of uh, interesting to me to kind of think about how sine and cosine connect to each other and how they, they both tie to like um, height and width. Right, I'm going to race a little bit more. We'll do a little more practice with these. All right, we have this triangle right here, and I know two of the side lengths. Now, I used theta and alpha in here to be my variables for my um, angles, and now that's, that's common. We usually use Greek letters from the Greek alphabet to stand for angle measures. So let's take a look at theta. Let's find things like uh, sine of theta, cosine of theta. Let's actually just find all six trig functions for theta. Notice I don't even know what the measure of theta is, um, so I'm going to have to do a little work to get this. Can't just shove it into a calculator. One thing I'm going to need to know is that side. Well, I know Pythagorean theorem. I know that, that 2 squared, I'll just call this a, plus a squared equals 3 squared. So a must be the square root of 5. That's how long this, this side is right here, square root of 5. So let's do these. Uh, sine of theta. So theta is my angle. That's where I'm going to center myself. I know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be root 5. And there's the hypotenuse opposite the right angle. Root 5 over 3. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. That would be root 5 over 2. Great, let's keep taking a peek then. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I can flip it over. 3 over root 5. I'm going to come back and clean this up in just a sec. Secant would be the reciprocal of cosine, 3 over 2. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, 2. That was supposed to be a 2. 2 over root 5. Now, um, technically, I shouldn't be leaving radicals in the denominator. So I'm going to rationalize that denominator, multiply by this version of 1. And so notice what that gives me is a 3 root 5 up here. Root 5 times root 5 is root 25, which is 5. And then same thing here. I'm going to rationalize that denominator. So this would be 2 root 5 over 5. And notice I could go through the same exercises with alpha. I could find all six trig functions for alpha as well. So notice we have not used a calculator yet. We actually haven't known any of these, these angle measures um, and, and done anything with them. But we did just talk about what if we had a 45, 45, 90. Let's just assume that these are one long, these lengths, we know they're the same. And let's find uh, sine and cosine for 45 degrees. So uh, 45 degrees, let me use Pythagorean theorem to get this length. So I know that 1 squared plus 1 squared, it would be c squared. So 2 would be c squared, so c is square root of 2. That means uh, if I have 45 degrees, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2. But remember, I'm really not supposed to leave that radical in the denominator. So this would be root 2 over 2. So uh, also, if I were to do cosine of it, look, there's my angle. If 
If I do cosine of it, it's adjacent over it, which is the same. Remember, they're equal to each other. Root 2 over 2. So there's some things that I just know right off the bat. If I go um, sine of 45 degrees, or cosine of 45 degrees, it's root 2 over 2. Now this is something to know. This is, uh, this is something to, to memorize. Remember however, however you can. And let's actually do kind of one other set of things to know as well. And let's do it with, an, with another triangle. Let's do it uh, with what's called a, a 30-60-90 triangle. That'd be something like, uh, if this is 60 degrees, this is 30 degrees. I'm, I didn't do a good job of drawing it to scale, and that's that. So um, we want to know what sine and cosine would be for 30 degrees and for 60 degrees as well. Now this one we can kind of kind of make on our own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start with just an equilateral triangle where all the sides and all the angles are equal. This, these would all be 60. And I'll just make this, this too long. So notice if I, <clears throat> if I cut this right down the middle right here, this angle is half of that, so there's my 30 degrees. So there's that, so that's too long. And it would be half of this, so this side would be one long. So that's kind of cool. So even like right off the bat, I know that if I go cosine of 60 degrees, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, cosine of 60 degrees must be, must be one half. And I can also tell that sine of 30 degrees, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, that must also be uh, one half. So now I just have to figure out this length to get my, my cosine of 30 and my sine of 60. So let's use that bold Pythagorean theorem again. I know that 2 squared, I'll just call this b, is equal to 1 squared plus b squared. So 4 is 1 plus b squared. b squared is 3. So b must be root 3. Cool, so that lets me get like Sine of 60 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. Cosine, uh, then, of 30 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. So there are some angles right there just to know. Uh, um, the angles, these are benchmark angles, and they're equivalent sine and cosine. Notice uh, sine, as sine gets bigger in degrees, as this angle opens up, sine increases, right? If you have a very small angle, remember sine's about height. It's going to be small, but as sine gets larger, it gets bigger. And notice this number is getting bigger, 1 half root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2. And cosine goes in the opposite direction, smaller. And notice it goes, sine goes 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. It's a nice thing to, to kind of have memorized. So let's uh, let's step up to practicing using a, a calculator just for some for some measures. Let me do some erasing, then we'll do that. So let's look at some things like uh, sine of forty degrees. All right, so sine of forty degrees. I'm going to go over to my calculator. Um, now, in your calculator, you want to know if you are in radians or degrees. Your calculator can go either way. So if you look at the the mode button. You can see right here, right now, my, my calculator is set in degrees. If it wasn't, I could just arrow around to change it. So I'm in degrees, so now I'm going to go quit. And I just want to go sine of 40 degrees. So there's my sine button right there, sine of 40 degrees. Okay, it looks like it's about 0.64. So I could say it's about 0.64. Later on the course, we'll think about ways to find the exact value of this, but for now, this is, this is great. Um, cosine of pi over 5. Well, right now, I'm in degree mode, so if I want to do that, I could change pi over 5 into degrees, or I could change my calculator so it gets me radians, and then I can go, it was cosine of pi over 5. Cosine, there's my pi right there, so second that, divided by 5. Looks like it's about 0.81. And again, notice I'm using the, the approximate, the little flaky equal sign instead of the straight up. Um, so it's about 0.81. How about tangent of pi over 4? I know my calculator is in radian still, pi over 4, 1. Whoa, that's kind of crazy.
All right, so cosecant. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. It's sine flipped over. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is 1 divided by sine of 80 degrees. I'm going to show you two different ways to do that on your calculator. Now, you can see it says sine to the negative 1 here. That is not what we want to do. This is, this is not the same as cosecant. So one thing I could do is just what I typed, uh, one or what I wrote before, 1 divided by sine of 80 degrees. Oh, I better put my mode into degrees. I'm in radians. Looks like it's 1.01 about, 1.02 about. Um, the other thing I could do is I could go sine of 80 degrees and then flip it. That should give me the one, same answer. But either way, 1.012. Oh, I'm sorry, O2. Uh, cotangent is, that'd be 1 over tangent of 14 degrees. Same game. I'll just go 1 divided by tangent of 14 degrees. About 4.01. About 4.01. Great, so now I can use my calculator and get at some of these values. So that's going to help me with my next piece. So if I need to solve a triangle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find all the missing sides. So I need to know all the angle measures and all the side measures on it. So one thing, if I look at this angle measure, I know that A plus B has to be 90. So it looks like angle B must be 60 degrees. Um, let me write that in so that I don't need to look for it again. Uh, now I need to find A and B. Here's what's kind of cool. Uh, Look, I know that, that sine of 30 degrees is one half. So I know that sine of 30 degrees is equal to one half. And I also know in this, um, in this triangle, sine of 30 degrees, sine is opposite over hypotenuse is A over 12. So that means that one half must equal a over 12. Multiply both sides by 12. A must be 6. Now, notice another way I could have done that is if instead of knowing that it's one half, I have this sine 30 equals a over 12. I could multiply both sides by 12 here. 12 times sine of 30 degrees is a. And if I do that on my calculator, it gives me my answer. So then now all I have to do is find um, side B. And one thing that I could do with that is I could go and uh, do Pythagorean Theorem to get there. Or I could maybe use, um, I know that cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. And I know in this triangle that cosine of 30 degrees is B over 12. So that means that cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2 must equal b over 12. Multiply both sides by 12. 12 root 3 over 2, which would be 6 root 3. And that triangle is solved. I found all of the missing angles and all of the missing side lengths. Now, the thing about this is I found those exact values because I knew exact values for 60 and 30. I might not. It might be that I have um, something else. I could just use my calculator for it. I'm going to do another example like that. Well, let's go ahead and solve this triangle. And uh, this one is in radians, pi over 8. So one thing I know that is, is if uh, these angles add to 90 degrees, they're complementary. In radians, that means they would add to pi over 2 degrees, right? Half of 180, half of pi. So that means that this angle A must be pi over 2 minus pi over 8 in radians. And what's great about this is just turn this into eighths. This is already in eighths. So if I multiply this by 4 fourths, this is the same as 4 pi over 8 minus 1 pi over 8. So that must equal uh, 3 pi over 8. Great. So we know that angle is 3 pi over 8. And now we can start to set up 
um, set up some trig functions to get at this, for example, this side A. So I know that I know this side right here. So if I think about this pi over 8 and that side A, I, I know the adjacent side and I want to find the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse, that's, that must be cosine. So if I were to go cosine of pi over 8, that would give me adjacent over hypotenuse. That would give me 33.5 over A. All right, I want to solve this for A. This cosine of pi over 8, that's just a number. So if I multiply both sides by A, that would be A times cosine of pi over 8 is 33.5. And uh, since it's just A times some number, I could divide by that number to get A all alone. 33.5 divided by cosine of pi over 8. All right, so let me go to my calculator. First off. I'm going to turn it on. Uh, then I'm going to make sure that I am in radians. Cool. And then uh, what I was going to do was 33.5 divided by cosine of pi over 8. Looks like that side length must be about 36.26. And that, that makes sense to me. Like this should be longer than that because this is the hypotenuse. And so now to find B, um, I have a couple of options. I could use Pythagorean theorem or I could set up another, uh, another trig function. I think I'll set up another trig function since that's what we are, that's what we're working on right now. So let's see, if I wanted to find B, I'll use this pi over 8 again. And the sides relative to it now are the opposite and the hypotenuse. That looks like sine to me. So sine of pi over 8 should be opposite over hypotenuse. It was about 36.26. So now if I want to, this is multiply both sides by that 36.26 to get B all alone. And that should give me a, a pretty good estimate for B. Uh, so 36.26 times sine of pi over 8. And actually, I already have the answer right here. So I'm just going to go answer times sine of pi over 8. So it looks like about 13.88. And this is a nice little kind of rule of thumb to think. The smallest angle is opposite the smallest side. The middle sized angle is opposite the middle side, and the largest angle is opposite the largest side. That's That doesn't guarantee you're right, but um, at least you don't have proof that you're wrong. It's just a nice little rule of thumb to, to check. All right, so I'm going to ask you uh, in this homework to do a couple things. Um, one of them is, you know, find sine, cosine, tangent, uh, and cosecant, secant, cotangent, given the triangle. I'm going to ask you to solve some triangles. I'm going to ask you to find some exact values as well for the 30, 30 45, 60. Give the problems a try. Let me know if you have any questions. And uh, you can message me through WAMAP. And uh, take a look at the chapter in the book too. That might help. All right, good luck.